today to talk about the examination of the thyroid gland. The thyroid is a gland in the neck which can enlarge, can cause symptoms uh, of overfunction or underfunction as well. In this case we've got a lady with an enlarged thyroid gland with signs of uh, function disturbance as well. Uh, I'm going to ask you some questions. We start with the history always when you examine a patient. Um, Madam, how old are you? 38 years old. 38 years old. How long have you been sick? Yeah. For about a year. Yeah. What did you start with? What was worrying you at that stage? I'm worried because I'm, I'm so tired. Also. You're feeling tired? tired yeah. Okay. Would you have anything else? Like were you losing weight? Yeah. I lose the weight. How much weight did you lose in how much time? I lose, I weigh seven. Weight, but not 70 weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now it's 60. So you lost 10 kilograms in about a year. Yeah. Okay, so you lost quite a significant a lot of weight. Okay. Um, was there anything else worrying you? Were you feeling shaky or? Yeah, we were shaky always. Were you feeling and, shaky? Yeah, I feel shaky. Okay. And, and I had pain. Where did you have pain? Had this or? You're having headaches? Yeah, headaches. Okay. Were you having, was your heart beating very fast? Yeah. Was it making as if it was running away with you? Yeah, always when I, when my heart beat so fast, so fast. Okay. Signs of hypothyroidism uh, that you can look at, weight loss, um, uh, uh, palpitations, tremor, those are the things that you must ask the patient. Did you notice anything about your eyes? Yeah, something. My eyes are so big. Your eyes becoming big? Yeah. When did you notice that the eyes were becoming big? From the beginning or was it later? Later. Was it later on? Yeah. When, how long ago had the eyes been like this? It was six. About six, six months? Six months, yeah. Okay. Have you noticed anything about your hair, that your hair is falling out or is breaking or it is dry? No. Sir. Nothing like that. Significantly with hypothyroidism, we have hair loss or breaking of hair. Hypothyroid symptoms also can affect the hair growth and that can also present with, uh, with, with breaking of hair and hair that doesn't grow very fast. Remember that the thyroid gland is very related with your metabolism, so anything that affects them, that, that is related to metabolism can be affected by the thyroid gland. The thing to also remember is that there are familial or predisposing factors to thyroid disease, so we have to ask about family history. Anybody in your family with problems with the thyroid? No one. Nobody in the family. Have you ever had problems with the thyroid yourself before? No. This is the first time you've had the problem. Have you ever had other sicknesses in the neck that you received x-rays or radiation or anything like that? No. Nothing like that? Nothing so. Okay. Alright, predisposing factors, radiation to the neck is very well known to cause thyroid problems, especially cancer. Um, family history of thyroid disease, cancer can be a familial problem. And of course, other benign diseases like multinodular goiter and so on uh, can also play a role. Endemic goiter disease uh, can also be looked for. We must know where the patient comes from, especially if they come from places like Lesotho, where they live in the mountains and they aren't exposed to iodide, uh, iodinized salt and so on, and bred with, with iodine replacement and so on in or supplements, uh, is important because that can predispose, predispose to thyroid disease. Where do you come from? I come from Tumafunga. Where is that? In Bloemfontein. In yeah. so you're locally. Yeah. Okay. Alright, do you have any problems when you are swallowing? No. So you can eat normally? Normally, but not big, not f big food. What so happens when you eat no big food? No, and I eat, no, and then I eat. What happens when you eat big food? The food is boring me. I, I don't know what is it. Is it starting, to, does it feel like it's getting stuck? Yeah. Is that yeah. you're struggling to swallow it fast? But when I swallow, I swallow correctly. You can swallow, okay. Alright. When you sleep at night, do you feel that there's something pressing in your neck or that is uh, trying to choke you? No, sir. Not. Okay. I'm specifically asking about pressure symptoms. Pressure symptoms uh, is one of the indications for thyroid surgery. 
when the thyroid gets too big, then they, it starts pressing on the, on the esophagus, which is posterior to the thyroid, and posterior to the uh, uh, trachea as well. And then the people often complain that they struggle to eat solids or big bites of food, and they end up having to chew a lot better, and they rather, rather take in liquids or soft food. Um, <clears throat> when, it, when the thyroid gland gets very big, especially when they, when they lie down or sleep, it feels like they are choking due to a type of a pressure effect in the neck as well. Madam, I want to just ask you, your voice, when you are speaking, has your voice changed in any way? Yeah, my voice has changed. In what way has it changed? Uh, my voice is so small now. Is it but small? In the beginning it's so loud. Yeah. So your voice has become weaker? Yeah. Um, have you ever had a situation where your voice is is hoarse or that your your voice is sort of like disappearing when you're speaking? Yeah, when I'm speaking, I scope a oxygen before I breathe in before I finish okay. to speak. Yeah. All right. Changes in voice, especially hoarseness, is a sign that is worrisome and must always uh, make you think of a large mass in the neck, or especially carcinoma due to the recurrent laryngeal nerve that can be stretched or infiltrated which will then uh, affect the vocal cords and then cause hoarseness. Benign disease can cause a change in voice, so it's not always a sign of malignancy but it must always uh, elicit a red flag response. Um, have you noticed anything growing in your neck, anything that is becoming big in your neck? Big. Have you noticed something in your neck that is growing? Yeah. This, have you noticed this mass in your neck? Yeah. How long is it, has it been big like that from the beginning or has it over time become bigger? It's time to. Has it over time become bigger? Yeah. Okay, so how did, the, how did the sickness start? Did it start with, with, the, with the tiredness and the loss of weight and the shaking and the palpitations and then you also then started with the headaches and then the mass that was growing as well? Is that, is that correct? Yes, yeah, Okay. It's always just important to reiterate what the patient says so that you've got the right, right idea and that you understood correctly so that um, the idea that you have and what the patient has, has given is, uh, 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 is just strengthened in a way that you don't get anything wrong. Okay. I'm going to examine you now. So we will have a look and see what is going on. The history has helped us to guide us in the right direction. Um, but before I get to the examination, maybe we must just also mention the other uh, uh, symptoms and signs of thyroid disease. Hyperthyroidism, of course, can present like this with loss of weight, tremor, palpitations, hair changes, eye signs. But hyperthyroidism on the other side will then present in a different way where the patients will gain weight where they will um, uh, uh, start getting sluggish, they will start feeling as if their thoughts are slower, they can even become depressed, um, they can even present with, with signs of the eyebrow, where the lateral third of the eyebrow is started thinning out, which is the Queen Anne sign. Uh, there are a whole lot of other, other complaints like uh, constipation with, with uh, hypothyroidism as well. In hypothyroidism, of course, you also get your diarrhea as well. Is your stomach working very often or more than usual? It's going often. Is it going normally? No. Is it going too much? No. So that she has also got symptoms of diarrhea which can fit in. Okay, uh, let's concentrate on the examination now, which is important uh, to notice is uh, the rate of the pulse and whether there are any dysrhythms. Hyperthyroidism can give you heart dysrhythms, especially atrial fibrillation and other uh, dysrhythms which, uh, which can occur. And remember the hyperthyroid state can actually cause complications like heart failure and other, other symptoms and signs as well. At the moment we will, I'm busy counting her pulse and I notice that it is fast. Yeah, I've counted her pulse at 130 per minute, which is definitely fast. Any pulse above 90 is considered as a tachycardia. A pulse below 60 will be, will be uh, a, a, a bradycardia. And of course, the hypothyroid patient will present with bradycardia most likely. 
You must always also make sure what medication the people are on. People with hypothyroidism are normally placed on a beta blocker to bring their symptoms under control, which can bring their heart rate down and can mislead you to think that their heart rate is normal, but yet it's actually the medication keeping it under control. With, uh, just looking at the patient with your, um, with your eyes and seeing what you can see, um, if you look at the patient carefully, grossly, you will notice that she's got a fairly anxious look on her face, which is a specific sign that we get with hypothyroid patients. They look tense, they look fidgety, they are um, uh, uh, they, they're normally not a relaxed looking patient at all. Whereas in a hypothyroid patient, the patient will look very sluggish and almost lazy looking. Um, in this case, you can see she's got very fidgety eyes, her eyes are moving around a lot, her hands are moving a lot as well. And um, what we notice if we look at her very, very closely is that her eyes are definitely looking different to what other people's eyes are looking. You will notice that her, um, her eyes, the white under the eye and above the eye is visible, which shows that she has, does have exophthalmos. If you want to follow, follow her eye, her lid lag and so on, you can ask her just to look up and down and, and sometimes you can elicit it that, that, that the lag will follow, follow a little bit later after the, the eye is moved downwards. We will also notice that she's definitely got a mass in the neck and you can even see that her veins are slightly distended as well. If you look at her carefully, it, the thyroid looks like it's enlarged on both sides. Let me just follow the thyroid out that you can see what I'm pointing to. It looks like both sides are enlarged. Um, fairly symmetrically, maybe the right hand side on this side is slightly more enlarged than the left hand side. Uh, uh, but uh, we will examine it just now and uh, see if our, our visual impression is actually the same as what we get for the examination. We can look at any other type of uh, signs as well, like, uh, like uh, skin changes, dryness of skin, sweaty palms. Uh, we can ask her to, we can look to see if there are tremors involved. We can ask her just to put her hands out in front of her, put the hands out like that and spread your fingers wide for me. You can see very clearly that there's a tremor involved. If you want to look at it in a lot more objective way, you can use a piece of paper and put the paper on the hands and you will straight away see how, how very clearly that the tremors are with the fine motor tremor. Okay, you can relax again. Her hands do seem a little bit sweaty to me and they are very warm. Um, another thing that I should have mentioned in the history is heat intolerance or cold intolerance. Of course, people with hypothyroid disease uh, tend to really get warm and they, they, uh, they are normally getting a lot warmer when other people are cold. In winter they have less clothes on and in summer they really get very warm. Hypothyroid patients will, will tend to always get cold. Um, they will always have uh, 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 more clothes on than other people and even in summer they'll be wearing jerseys or warmer clothes. We are going to uh, examine the neck now. So to do that, I'm going to stand uh, next to the patient and first of all ask her just to swallow for me. See if she can swallow. You can see very clearly the thyroid is moving itself up. I would like to just use a glass of water as well. Often they struggle to swallow. So I will ask her just to swallow the water. So take a sip of water and then swallow it for me. Just take the glass of water and then swallow. You can see very clearly the mass in the neck is moving up which is uh, very indicative of the thyroid mass. Remember the thyroid is fixed to the trachea by the ligament of Berry and with swallowing the whole pharynx does move up and actually moves the trachea, the upper part of the trachea up with it. So that does indicate that it's most likely a thyroid mass. Other congenital diseases in the thyroid like a th thyroglossal cyst or a duct cyst uh, will be attached to the base of the tongue uh, by a by the thyroglossal duct, so it's important also to exclude that. So you ask the patient just to stick out her tongue. Stick your tongue out for me. Okay, stick it out again, and you will see the mass isn't moving on sticking out to the tongue. That's just to exclude the thyroglossal duct cyst. All right, I'm going to now stand behind the patient. It's the best way to examine the thyroid gland. 
place my hands medial of the, uh, the sternomastoid muscles, uh, which, which then will put place the trachea and the larynx uh, between my fingers and medially. And then we will then feel to see what we can feel here. Normally you can feel, feel the trachea. If the thyroid gets very large, the trachea becomes obs obstructed by the thyroid and you won't actually be able to feel it. But it's important to try and feel the trachea to see if it is still central or if it has actually been displaced left or right due to either a unilateral or, or a asymmetrical enlargement of the thyroid. It is easier to examine the thyroid while the patient is swallowing as well, just to get an idea of where the thyroid is exactly. Please swallow again for me. And normally if the thyroid is very big, you can actually try and see if you can get below the thyroid when they swallow it, which will actually help you to decide how big, how large an extent the thyroid is actually growing in behind the sternum into, into the chest itself. And you, we can actually see over here that, uh, as I said before, it looks like both sides are enlarged. And here I confirm it with my examination. I can feel the upper lobes over here and then the, uh, the lower lobes. And there's a slight nodularity to this uh, to this thyroid, especially on the left hand side, I feel a slight little nodule over here, but it might, might just be, an, uh, be a perception that my fingers give me. This would be, have to be confirmed on a, th on a thyroid sonar, which is very important. The rest of the thyroid feels very soft and rubbery, it's not very hard, um, it is movable, it doesn't feel to be uh, connected to the skin at all, uh, it feels warm. Uh, to the touch, which is typical of a hypothyroid uh, 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 mass, uh, and uh, uh, and over here in the middle midline, you can feel the isthmus. And if necessary, if there was a pyramidal lobe involved, you would probably feel that enlarged as well. Okay, uh, I'm now quite quite happy that I think this is a type of a fairly symmetrical enlargement. I would have to investigate this hard nodule that I feel on the left hand side um, more, clear, more closely with my further investigations. Let me just talk about the nodule and what I feel. It is important to describe each nodule when, as, you, as you examine it as well. This nodule feels probably about half a centimeter in size. It, uh, it's a little bit harder than the surrounding tissue, which, uh, which, which uh, makes me think that it could be a nodule. It's important also when examining the neck to make sure that there are no palpable lymph nodes involved because that would be important to, to uh, indicate any reactive changes um, or um, attach metastatic lymph nodes in a cancer. I feel no lymph nodes involved. We feel underneath uh, the submandibular glands and everywhere in the neck to see if there are any palpable lymph nodes. The lymph nodes, if they do become involved, often get first ones to enlarge are those uh, below the thyroid in level 6 of the neck, which is below, uh, below the thyroid between the stenomastoid muscles and above the thyroid, uh, above the sternal notch. One thing a person always forgets about is to remember to listen to the thyroid. The thyroid, especially in Graves' disease, which is, uh, which is most probable in this case, has a very significant uh, brui or a venous hum uh, heard and that must be listened to. So I'm going to take my stethoscope and just listen to the thyroid gland. I can hear a brew over there, which indicates the increased blood flow that the thyroid has. Another way to look if the thyroid is growing retrosternally or is enlarging retrosternally would be to percuss the thyroid, uh, percuss the, the sternum to hear if, if the, uh, on percussion there is any dullness which could indicate that the thyroid was there. I'm going to ask you to lie down for me and I will just do my percussion. 
as you can hear, there's no difference in sound and there's no dullness on percussion here on the stern of the, on the Manubian itself. So I don't think uh, that there's any retrosternal extension of the thyroid gland itself. You can see as she is lying here how nervous she is and uh, the, the, uh, um, the tension that she has in her face and so on, which is then indicative of the hypothyroid function as well.